Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Carl Strass, and I'm the Climate Adaptation Resilience Manager for the National Wildlife Federation's Mid-Atlantic Regional Center, based right across the bridge in Annapolis. Uh, first, I'd like to thank all of you for coming out here. Uh, the weather really cooperated with us today. It didn't look like it this morning, but um, I hope you all took the opportunity to walk around a little bit at the beginning, get to explore this beautiful park and this beautiful new and innovative and climate smart living shoreline that we're here to inaugurate today. Uh, I just, I'd like to extend a special thanks to the Secretary of Natural Resources, Mark Belton, for his attendance, for the Deputy Chief of Staff, Jeannie Hathaway, from Governor Hogan's office, for Senator Steve Hershey, Delegate Jeff Grist, and Delegate Steve Aaron's attendance today, as well as the staff of the Board of Public Works and the Queen Anne's County's commissioners. Uh, without the support of you and all of your organizations, this project wouldn't have happened. So thanks for all for coming out today. It's been my distinct pleasure over the past two years to work with an incredible group of people from Queen Anne's County, Maryland, the Department of Natural Resources, as well as the Queen Anne's County Soil Conservation District, Sustainable, Sustainable Science, and Delmarva RCND. Together we've been able to transform what you see, not before you, but beside you, um, from an eroding piece of shoreline into one of the most innovative and climate smart sections of shorelines, not just in the county and not just in the state, but in the entire country. Um, so to get ourselves started, I know we have a lot of speakers, so to put this project into context, I would first like to invite Chip Price, the director of Queen Anne's County Park and Recs, up to the podium. We'll talk a little bit about the history of the project and the site. Good afternoon. I'm Chip Price, as Carl said. Thank you, Carl. Appreciate that. It's great to have everyone here today. It's, it's, uh, it's really impressive. It's virtually a, a who's who of land conservationists and habitat protection folks um, here today, different organizations. Uh, it's really, I'm really pleased to see everybody in attendance. I was asked to give a little bit of the history of the park and also a little bit of the timeline on this project. First, I'd like to, for those who haven't been here, I'd like you to welcome you to uh, Conquest Preserve. It's um, a little over 750 acres. It's the largest land holding in the Queen Anne's County Park System. It's a combination of uh, active recreation and passive recreation and habitat protection. <clears throat> it, it has over three miles of shoreline and the shoreline is on the Corsica River to the south and also to the Chester River to the north, which makes it kind of unique. Also, it's an integral part of the Queen Anne's County um, Lands End Rural Legacy uh, area. Uh, Rural Legacy has been around for a while. It's one of DNR's programs, Department of Natural Resources programs. Um, and this particular uh, Lands End area is ma it's made up of over 11,000 acres of land that's uh, hopefully protected. Uh, this, this location that we're on today within the 750-acre uh, uh, preserve is an area that historically was used as a public beach um, through the uh, uh, gracious allocation of the space of the Wilson family over the years. Um, back in 1998, the uh, Queen Anne's County Park System, with the uh, financial assistance of a number of other groups, um, among which were uh, the Department of Natural Resources uh, stateside program open space, <coughs> Department of Natural Resources Rural Legacy Program, National Park Service Land and Water Conservation Fund, and the North American Wetlands Conservation Council all kicked in along with the county to, to acquire the property in 1998 with a subsequent acquisition in 2003 that acquired the remainder of the 750 some acres. So for that, uh, Queen Anne's County is always grateful for, to the department uh, Secretary Belton, and uh, to our other uh, groups that contributed to that. So as you can see, even with that start, it was a very cooperative effort uh, involving federal funds and state funds and county funds and a nonprofit at that point. And this project we have before us today just continued that thinking where many groups contributed to what is a really good project. So starting off in 2005, is when the uh, Army Corps reviewed the site for the living shoreline and said that, you know, guys, you're right. You do have an erosion problem, and uh, maybe you should do something about it. Well, establishing the need is the first step, but then all the partners have to get together and figure out, well, how are you going to pay for that? Um, in 2013, I remember that was 2005. In 2013, 
DNR fortunately came in and re redesigned the project and they cut the cost of the project by a million four hundred thousand dollars substantial cut that's very good but then in uh, 2014 uh, through they contacted or actually the National Wildlife Federation contacted uh, the county to find out or DNR to find out what could be done what kind of projects could be accomplished and a uh, working with the Wild, Wildlife Conservation Society um, they were able to put a grant together that would assist in the uh, development of the shoreline living shoreline project so another good step you can see these projects take a long time because it takes a lot to get all the ducks in a row and DNR was very uh, very good at putting that together um, also in 2014 sustain sustainable science with uh, Albert McCulloch uh, developed um, the plan for the for the beach which was finally developed and I know Albert's going to talk about this later so I won't go into it in detail but uh, developed a plan that would eventually turn into the shingle beach design that you see out here today uh, that is the innovative design that um, helped us out a lot on the on the finances as well in April of this year 2016 uh, the actual uh, Queen Anne's County commissioners stepped up to the plate and dedicated funds from the watershed implementation plan they had set money aside very wisely set money aside for that plan and they dedicated some of that money to serve as a match against the Wildlife Conservation Society money to actually put the, actually put the plan into effect so then in June of this year um, we were trying to find times when the work could be done here when we didn't have the facility rented out and so uh, fortunately we're working with the uh, soil conservation district and they uh, did a fine job of fitting in in between the rental times to get move a huge quantity of stone cobblestone and sand in here which was then starting we had a two-week window where we didn't rent it out at all in the summer in July and once that two-week window hit um, soil conservation district was I think they were living here um, they were out here working all the time to get all that uh, sand and stone in place they did a wonderful job as you'll see if you visit the, the site and then finally after that to finish it up in August with the cooperation of the uh, with DNR National Wildlife Federation and, and Wild, Wildlife Conservation Society in the county everybody worked together and they got volunteers together to go out and actually plant the grasses on site so we can start to stabilize the site so that's it in a nutshell it, that brings you up to where we are today and I hope you get a chance to go out and take a look at it um, I know we've had a lot of comments by users of the park that they they love what's been done here it's uh, as you can see the views are fantastic and it's serving a, a great um, role as habitat protection as well and in parks if you can get that bang for the buck where you serve the recreational needs of the public and also do resource conservation that's a real plus so again I'd like to thank all the participants and I'd love to thank you all for coming out here today and that we get a chance to talk afterwards thanks so much chip and I think as we were talking earlier you said it often takes a village to get these projects done and I think you really outlined that well in describing how over the past 10 15 years all these pieces have led to what's been done in the shoreline and I know I speak for the National Wildlife Federation when I say I hope that it won't be the last time that we all work together. Uh, so next I would like to invite the Deputy Chief of Staff from Governor Hogan's office, Jeannie Hadaway, to the podium to deliver a message from the Governor's office. Jeannie? Well, thank you for the invitation to be here today. Um, the Governor is winding down his trade mission in Israel, and so he could not be here. But he, in Israel, has had the chance to talk about all of the things in Maryland that we're so proud of. And he has also had the chance to talk about innovation and opportunities to change Maryland for the better. And that's exactly what I think about today as we think about this project. Innovation, partnership, and changing Maryland for the better. And those are the types of projects that we want to support and celebrate. Um, so to everyone that was involved and that made this possible, we thank you for your contributions. And so without further ado, um, the governor also asked that we present a citation to recognize this an occasion. And it says, be it known that on behalf of the citizens of this state, 
in recognition of a special tribute to honor and celebrate the occasion of the Conquest Living Shoreline Ribbon Cutting Ceremony in honor of the successful culmination of a multi-partner project design that included funding and support of the National Wildlife Federation Wildlife Conservation Society, Queen Anne County, and the Department of Natural Resources. And as our citizens join in expressing our best wishes and congratulations, we are pleased to confer upon you this governor's citation, and it's signed by the governor, the lieutenant governor, and the secretary of state. Thank you again for what you've done here. Thanks so much. That, that award really means a lot to us, and uh, you know it really encourages us to keep pressing forward with innovation uh, in, in the in the field of conservation in Maryland. Um, our next speaker will be Delegate Steve Arendt. Uh I believe he'll be also reading a message uh, that he'll be delivering. Thanks. Thank you. Um, I can't tell you how great this feels to be up here. Uh, last time I was up here was for somebody's wedding, and. It became quite an event for us, um, and I think it's uh, just a tribute to Queen Anne's County that we have such a beautiful site that we can do this with. Um, I was asked by Treasurer Nancy Kopp to come over and, and read something, but uh, I just wanted to touch on her a little bit. Is She's been a tremendous friend to Queen Anne's County. If you look at some of the projects that we have, there isn't a week that goes by or a public work meet, works meeting that goes by that I'm not getting something for our district. I think the cooperation between the state and Queen Anne's County is, has been pretty, pretty exceptional over the last... Two, two to three years. Um, she asked me to read this. It's to uh, uh, Mark Anderson, President, Board of County Commissioners, Queen Anne's County. It says, Dear Mr. Anderson, congratulations to you, the Queen Anne's County Commissioners, the Department of Parks and Public Landings, along with the National Wildlife uh, Federation, Maryland Department of Natural Resources, and all of those who have helped lead, lead the way and worked on this uh, showcase project. I am, I am very... I, I, she said, I'm very sorry my crowded schedule does not permit me to join you to, for today's ceremony and ribbon cutting. The, the uh, pioneering transformation created by the planning and stabilization work nearly 1,400 linear feet of eroded shoreline to the beautiful and ecologically pro productive Conquest Living Shoreline is testament to the Queen Anne's County's commitment to protecting already threatened ecological resources. The community should be proud of their county commissioners and elected officials and staff working in concert with the federal, state, and local <laughs> stakeholders to promote and enhance the quality of life for residents and visitors. Thank you for thinking of me with the invitation and know that all those in involved with this project have my highest regards. Sincerely, Nancy Kopp, Treasurer. And congratulations, Queen Anne County, and what a great, great site you have here. Thank you. Thanks, Delegate. I hope the county has still enough blank space on their wall to, to put all these new awards on there. Um, so I know we've all been talking about you know, the innovative and the, and the um, pioneering aspects and the climate smart aspects of the shoreline. So our next speaker can go into a little bit more detail about that. Um, Albert McCullough of Sustainable Science, he was a project designer, um, and he'll come up here and talk a little bit more about you know, what is so special about what you see on the shoreline right there. Albert? Uh, just a quick uh, survey. Raise your hand if you're alive. <laughs> okay, I, uh, hopefully all the hands are up. Okay. So anyway, but uh, basically, from being alive, it defines you're defined by your past experiences. It makes you who you are, and then also in the future, wh where you want to go to. So I use that basically for the living shoreline uh, design. In the past, what we, what we do, we get the National Archives 1846 Coastal Geodetic Charts, 1890s, and the Aerial Series from 1930 forward to get a feel where the shrine has been. Every shrine is as unique as each person out here. And to really understand it, you have to understand what the past is to get to understand where it's going forward. Then after that, uh, similar to us, uh, hopefully we'll retire one day, I want to see where we want to go to, what's defining our, our, our physical being, where we want to head towards. So with that, we have to define like the wave climate. That's what really is defining the shoreline out here. Um, in this particular site, uh, Chesapeake Bay has two different types of wind conditions. In the, in the, in the wintertime, our Canadian friends blow cold air upon us and persistently. In the summertime, uh, our uh, guys from this, uh, Florida blow the uh, warm air over us. 
this particular site has a winter wind uh, driven fetch and also to a nor'easter. So that really defines it like a seesaw going back and forth on the shoreline. What the actual um, uh, historical uh, air, uh, uh, analysis showed was there was a hump in 1846 and went off shoreline. And you'll see when you walk down there, there's a hump that we recreated to actually redefine and restore where the shoreline position was back in the day. Uh, so for us, and the other part too, uh, uh, Basker, are you going to talk a little bit more about like the different projects or I'm the only one up here? Well, we... Oh, just me, just me. Okay, all right. Well, I'll have this for listen. Just how we've been evolving. I want to thank Queen Anne's County because we've been really on a like an innovative saying, it's okay, guys, we can do this. Let's you know try these different techniques out and then we scale up. What we've done in the past, I mean, the, really in the long time in the past, we used to have rock, you know, solid rock, revetted along the shoreline or a bulkhead all the way across. Then we've evolved into like the sand and the rock part. And to paraphrase a, a, a line from Saturday Night Live, we need more cobbles. I got the fever. We need more cobbles. So cobbles was a missing piece in the living shoreline. And in these river systems, they're an actual component of it. You go out there in the, in the area of the beach that was stable, there's a cobble layer through there. And some of the, uh, they call them shingle beaches, like Chip was saying. These are natural systems. They're actually larger pieces that can really resist the wave climate, but also gives a, a diversity of substrate, which would also translate into a diversity of species, the knee bone connected to the thigh bone to the hip bone. So it all comes together. And I'm glad also, too, that the public can actually use it, too, because connecting to the shoreline is very important. If you, we kind of get disconnected a little bit when you have bulkheads and riprap. So in that case, um, that's how it was designed. I can talk more later on if people have specific questions, but it gives you a general understanding of how we came about and this project got evolved. And I'll stop there. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Albert. And then to help commemorate this project, uh, the project partners will be installing an interpretive panel that will highlight a lot of the innovative aspects that Albert just spoke about. Uh, so at this time, I'd like to invite the Queen Anne's County Commissioners, Commissioner Buckley, Commissioner Steve Wilson, Commissioner Moran, and Commissioner Jack Wilson up to the interpretive panel. So now we'll be moving on to the ceremonial ribbon cutting while we're all, why we're all here today. Uh, so I would like to invite uh, Jeannie Hathaway, Senator Steve Hershey, Delegate Jeff Grist, Dr. Bruce Stein, and Secretary Belton to the front. And you will be outfitted with scissors by Baskar there. Remember, no, no running. No running once you have the scissors. <laughs> Our next speaker is Dr. Bruce Stein. Bruce is the Associate Vice President for Climate Adaptation and Conservation Science at the National Wildlife Federation, and he'll speak a little bit about how this project represents the goals uh, that the National Wildlife Federation strives for in all their conservation work. Great, thank you very much, Carl. And it's a pleasure to, to be here and see this project uh, as a reality rather than just as a, as a design and a dream. The National Wildlife Federation is the nation's largest conservation organization, and our mission is to unite Americans to ensure that wildlife thrive 
in a rapidly changing world. And I can't think of a better example of a project that, that does that because this project, you've been hearing about its innovative nature, but one of the elements of that is that living here in the mid-Atlantic region and on the bay, we know that, that sea level rise are coming up. In fact, they're coming up here on the bay about twice the level that they are around the, the world. And so one of the real challenges that we had was to ask, how can we both use nature to help protect shorelines, both for people and wildlife, but do it in a way that can actually keep up with, with the changing water levels? And that's really at the heart of, of the design, the shingle design, an approach that was, come, uh, that was uh, introduced here. And so that's one of the reasons why we're so very proud and, so, uh, and how that matches up with the National Wildlife Federation's desires to de develop and promote what we call climate smart conservation. Uh, I'd like to thank the partners that worked on this. It was really a, a pleasure to collaborate with the state of Maryland, uh, Queen Anne's County, uh, uh, the other project partners, and I'd especially like to thank uh, the uh, Wildlife Conservation Society and the Doris Duke Charitable Foundation for the grant to the National Wildlife Federation that enabled our uh, participation in this uh, project. So again, thank you very much for the opportunity to, to collaborate on this, and we hope that this is just the first of, of many more such collaborations. Thank you, Bruce. We're also honored today to have Maryland's Secretary of Natural Resources, Mark Belton, here with us. Um, Secretary, I'd like to invite you up to the podium. Thanks. Thanks. Appreciate it. Wow, thanks, everybody. What a, what a beautiful day. Um, and what a great group of folks we have up here uh, to be here for this great event, representing Queen Anne's County. Wanted to call out Jeannie hadaway Riccio, who talked earlier on behalf of the governor. Jeannie at the State House has oversight of a number of state agencies, including every one of the departments that make up the, the state's Bay Cabinet. So that's not only the Department of Natural Resources, where I work, but it's also the Department of Agriculture, the Department of the Environment, um, the Department of Planning, and maybe nine or ten others, I want to say, are, are in your portfolio, Jeannie. So um, Jeannie particularly is aware of and appreciative of the terrific natural resources that are here on the Eastern Shore. And Jeannie even represented the Eastern Shore in the House of Delegates for several years. So Jeannie, it's a real pleasure to have you here today and, and join us for this event on behalf of the governor. Um, not mentioned earlier, he wasn't here to, wait, to wave his hand, but I did want to point out Senator Steve Hershey. Steve, thank you for coming so much. Um, give him a hand, please. Yeah. Steve is also a great partner for the, for the state government and the Department of Natural Resources. He's doing yeoman's work right now as one of many members on our Oyster Advisory Commission, uh, Department of Natural Resources, and that's not an easy job. It's quite a diverse group of opinions and, and, and uh, outspoken folks, and you're holding your own and doing a great job for, for the citizens. So thank you, Steve, for that. Della Garentz, thank you for being here as well. Um, several times during the recent legislative sessions, you know, I'll be uh, talking to folks uh, in the House of Delegates building, and I'll walk in, and, and Steve is one of the first ones there in the morning. Uh, I don't know if he makes coffee for everybody else, but he's definitely, he's definitely there to turn the lights on, and occasionally we get to talk about Queen Anne's County issues and he's always looking out for the welfare of the citizens over here and another great friend for natural resources in the state. So what a great team you have working in the state government on, on behalf of this county and this area. Um, it is a place, Congress Beach is a place of a thousand memories for me. Uh, my goodness, I was talking to um, Commissioner Stevie Wilson a little bit earlier and we were reminiscing a little bit. I remember when I was in high school and I graduated from high school in Centerville, in Queen Anne's County High School back in 1979. Um, I remember several of the extracurricular activities I would be involved with. We would have fall and spring events, and we would do them out here at Conquest Beach, and we'd, you know, play softball out there on, the, on that same softball field, and we'd go swimming in the same beach here, and we played something akin to uh, Ultimate Frisbee out there. We had a great time. This was always a place everybody looked forward to going, and it was at the uh, great generosity of the Wilson family that, that allowed that to happen. So thank you, Stevie, for you and your family to, to allow that to, to happen. And, and then as a young father with, with a number of young children who are all older now, you know, I would bring my kids out here uh, to, to see the same places that I enjoyed when, when I was younger. As a county commissioner and county administrator in Queen Anne's County, which is, is in my background, I had the distinct pleasure of working with a great staff and great, uh, great citizens as um, this was named, Conquest Farm was named as part of the first 
rural legacy areas in the state of Maryland. It was 1998 uh, to permanently preserve what we like to call the Sunday Drive, the uh, the beautiful um, rolling um, agricultural landscape uh, of our county along one of the most pristine waterways in the state, the, the Corsica River and the Chester River. Um, so this is really a, a, a tremendous place at the forefront of our preservation efforts um, in, in the state of Maryland. And Albert, uh, earlier, uh, where's Albert? Al Albert earlier mentioned, he, I mean, he was making a little joke. He said, if, if you're alive, raise your hand. I want to I want to uh, mention two folks who didn't raise their hand uh, <laughs> when we had that, uh, had, had that little exercise. The first is, is Bob Salit. Uh, we are standing in the Bob Salit uh, Pavilion, and uh, there's a monument to, to Bob right out, right out here. Bob was my predecessor as county administrator in Queen Anne's County, and Bob was my first employer when I was in ninth grade. I worked for the Parks and Rec Department and, and reported to Bob. Uh, he put many years uh, into uh, Queen Anne's County. Todd Mon is nodding his head, remembering very fondly. Faith Elliott Rossing is here, nodding her head as well, I'm sure. A lot of people remember Bob. He, this was a special place for Bob as well. So he would be very happy to see this, uh, this day. And the other is, is Wes Johnson, who was a longtime um, employee at the Queen Anne's County, um, or director of the Queen Anne's County Parks and Rec Department, um, and an employee at uh, the Department of Natural Resources for a while as well. He was uh, responsible for a lot of the um, uh, pushing forward of the conservation of this area. Um, Wes is buried right out in the cemetery out there that's uh, in Brick. Uh, so, you, you know, pay your respects to Wes as, as, you, as you leave today. But what a, what a great place. Um, as uh, was mentioned before, I am the Secretary of Natural Resources, and one of my roles is I get to chair a work group called the Adaptation and, Resil or Adaptation and Response Work Group for the state of Maryland. Um, and uh, here at Conquest Preserve, we're putting in place an adaptation strategy to make our state more resilient and prepared for the likelihood of climate-related weather change and events. As a state, we are committed to enhancing our natural defenses and harnessing the benefits of nature to better protect people and property along the coastline. This partner project was made possible through the department's SURE Conservation Program, a terrific program that all local governments should take advantage of. It provides technical expertise and financial assistance in the form of zero interest loans to waterfront property owners who experience shoreline erosion. So keep that in mind. Um, the term living shorelines, like the one we're celebrating here today, consists of a group of methods that mimic natural and natural-based systems. This innovative idea has proven successful in protecting properties, reducing sediment load into rivers and streams, and eventually flow into the Chesapeake Bay. Conquest Preserve is among a small handful of projects nas nationally to incorporate sea level rise predictions proactively into its design. There are two others right here in Queen Anne's County, one close to Centerville, as you go up a little bit uh, on this side of the town um, at uh, the Gunston School, then another one at the Ferry Park um, there uh, near the Bay Bridge at uh, uh, Ferry Point, I think it's called, thank you, um, there uh, on Kent Island. Um, so Queen Anne's County is kind of like the state's laboratory, if you will, for uh, natural, uh, natural remedies to sea level rise. It's a great distinction to have. Coastal resources such as wetlands, shorelines, dunes, and beaches can provide critical protection against storms as well as perform key natural functions. In addition, in addition to being more cost effective, the significant advantages of natural defenses over more traditional hardened measures like seawalls and revetments are the additional ecological benefits they provide, including water quality improvement, freshwater capture, groundwater protection, fisheries enhancement, wildlife habitat, birding hotspots and recreational space. So you get a whole lot of bang for your buck out of these living shoreline protection projects. To date, the Department of Natural Resources has built over 500 living shoreline projects across the state of Maryland, continuously improving on this cost-effective and cutting-edge technique. And Delegate Arentz, I wanted to also point out uh, the um, treasurer, Nancy Kopp. I attend the Board of Public Works meetings. And there's not a single Board of Public Works meeting goes by without her asking me a question, sometimes embarrassingly so in front of the cameras, uh, about uh, sea level rise and adaptation issues throughout the state of Maryland. As you pointed out, she's a great champion for preparation for our state in those, in those measures. So thank you for carrying that message from her today. Um, projects like this one don't just happen without an amazing group of partners. I'd be remiss if I didn't thank the Wildlife Conservation Society, the National Wildlife Federation, Queen Anne's County Parks and Recreation, Queen Anne's County Soil Conservation District, Delmarva Research Conservation and Development Council, and Sustainable Science LLC for their assistance. And of course, our crack Department of Natural Resources staff, <laughs> especially Kevin Smith, Catherine Shanks, Bashkar Subramanian, 
Sean Ryan, and Rebecca Swarita for their hard work and dedication. Let's give those folks a hand. They deserve it. And I also want to recognize all the volunteers for planting over 10,000 plants in two days. I don't know how people do that, but that's a tremendous accomplishment. Let's give them a hand, too. We look forward to helping more communities across the state to adapt to and prepare for our changing climate and assist them with living shorelines and other projects in the future, just like is being done seemingly every day here in Queen Anne's County. Thank you very much. Thanks for those remarks, Secretary. And now to bring us home, I'd like to invite Kevin Smith, Deputy Director of Maryland Department of Natural Resources, who will provide some closing remarks. I just want to point out now that following Kevin's remarks, we will all be moving over there, down there to the far end where the dune starts. There's some shovels lined up, and we'll actually be planning the last unplanted section of the shoreline today. So, you know, when you come back here in, in 5, 10, 15, 20 years, like the Secretary is talking about, you'll be able to look at the shoreline and say, you know what, I had a hand in, I had a hand in creating that. So, Kevin? Thank you, Carl. Um, I think maybe you guys brought them, but but there's two turkeys back in the field back there. And so you don't have to look at me. You can look back there. They're back there, um, which is great to see because that's what it's all about. So we love to see that. Um, it's really nice to be standing here because there's a lot of work that goes into these projects. There's a lot of folks that help out, um, do a lot of work, uh, spend a lot of time permitting, et cetera, et cetera, and uh, sometimes you never think you're going to get to the end of the end of the road and you finally get there. So it's really good when you finally do, and this one's particularly fulfilling to me because Tommy Bramble, yeah, I got a hat out of it, which is <laughs> something I don't get often. So anyway, so that's great. And there are a couple of people that I really need to thank, um, and Nancy, where's Nancy? Nancy, thank you all the work you put into that, as well as the folks from other folks from the county. Uh, Thomas William Minnick, where's Tom? He's here, I know, right there. Thank you, and Tommy Bramble, Mike Clow, both of you guys. And then our, uh, our partner in crime, but they're always misdemeanors, uh, Danny LeVan, <laughs> thank you very much. And, um, and so I go back and I think about a lot, all the work that we've done in Queen Anne's County uh, with Chip, Nancy, Danny, uh, starting like a Bloomfield farm. Where's Chip? Where's Chip? Yeah. Remember? Blue I mean, and so all the projects that we've done here, you know, both on land and now we're working with you on the uh, Blue Heron Nature Center, and it's just been a fantastic partnership. And uh, partnership is what it's all about because that's how we actually get things done. And then, you know, we get to something like this, which is really, um, and it, just a nationally innovative project and as the secretary said before you know we've done a lot of shoreline work in Queen Anne's County it's really become the epicenter of living shoreline uh, examples in the nation and there are people that come here and look at these shorelines I know uh, we're going to be in Louisiana sometime not not too distant future talking about living shorelines there so people are very interested in how these perform and how this all works out so it's really good to not only see it happen here but actually take that uh, out and let other folks uh, utilize what what we've learned here the last thing I'll say is is um, is money and we're all really focused on dollars and and Bascar who really led this project uh, tooth and nail from the beginning his dollar limit is what, Bascar? $10. $10. If you're spending more than $10, he gets upset. And, uh, and so, which is good. And so on this project, you know, this was a project that was originally estimated at $1.3 million and over time brought the cost of this thing down to, what was it, Bascar? $270,000. $270, $270, $270, and for something that I think we think is going to work out really well, and, and we're, we're hoping to see that happen. So, you know, when you can get things done efficiently, it's, it's really wonderful. And so with that, I'm going to close my remarks by just saying thank you all for being here. And if there's anybody that didn't get recognized, I apologize because there was so many 
so much help from the county and oh and the rc and d that's what i wanted to mention <laughs> thank you guys um and with that we'll go ahead and do the planting thank you So everyone is welcome to follow us and stroll along about half of the shoreline down there to where we'll be planting the top of the dune.